In the 1960s, the space race was well underway. Both the United States and Russia were trying to figure out how to put people on the moon. Another obvious place to compete in space is to send the first spacecraft to another planet. It sounds a little complicated, send a spacecraft to another planet, but I'm actually here to tell you a, a dirty little secret. The dynamics, the orbital dynamics of sending a spacecraft to another planet are actually pretty simple. And the reason they're pretty simple is because all you have to deal with is gravity. And when you're in flying through interplanetary space, all you have to do with, deal with is the sun's gravity. Eventually you get close to Mars, you have to deal with Mars's gravity. You have to leave the Earth, you have to leave, deal with Earth's gravity. But once you have done those two things, that flight through space is pretty easy. It's sufficiently easy that we can at least calculate some simple things about it just right now. First question you might ask yourself is, how would you get from Earth to Mars? Well, let's remember that, here's, let's put the sun here in the middle again. Earth is here, Mars is out here, and let's actually write down the distances because these are gonna be important. The distance from the sun to the Earth, average distance is defined to be one AU, one astronomical unit, and in these same units, in these same units, Mars is 1.524 astronomical units. So Mars is about 50% further away than the Earth is. So what do you do? Well, again, if it's April of 2014 when you happen to be looking at this, you know that Mars is nearly straight overhead at around midnight, which means that we're in a configuration that looks sort of like this. So is this when you launch your spacecraft? Well, okay, let's figure out how you do it. You launch your spacecraft here and you head straight toward Mars, but of course Mars has moved along this way. And so maybe you should launch in this direction and eventually intersect with Mars. If you start to iterate this long enough, you realize that the easiest thing to do, the least energetic solution, is actually not to launch towards Mars at all, but to launch perpendicular to the Earth's orbit with just a slightly higher velocity than the Earth's orbit. Let's look at how that looks. If this is the Earth's orbit, I'm gonna draw the whole thing now. Here's the orbit of Mars. The way you get from Earth to Mars using the least amount of energy, and using the least amount of energy is important because you have this large spacecraft that you're trying to get to Mars. The only energy source you have is a rocket. Usually your limiting factor is how much energy you can generate from this rocket. So the least energetic way to get from the Earth, Earth is right here to Mars, is a flight that goes, just barely hits the orbit of Mars, and if it continued on, didn't stop at Mars, it would come back to the Earth. Now you could do a lot more things. You could say, I'm gonna go faster, and I'm gonna try to go this way, but imagine what you've done now. You have intersected Mars, and you still have a high velocity as you're going through here, so you would take yourself way out through here to the outer part of the solar system and back in if you continued on after Mars. To get on an orbit like that requires a lot more energy than this one that's just barely leaving the Earth's orbit and just barely getting to Mars. As you might remember from orbital mechanics or just some basic physics, the important things that matter in an orbit are the semi-major axis and the eccentricity. The semi-major axis, this is an elliptical orbit now, the semi-major axis is the average of the closest and the furthest points from the orbit. The closest point of the orbit is called the perihelion. The furthest point from the orbit is called the aphelion. And they're simply related mathematically by Q, the perihelion, that's the typical thing we call it, use for perihelion, is A, the semi-major axis, times one minus the eccentricity, and Q, it's terrible that astronomers use this notation, but they do, is, which is the, the aphelion is A times one plus E. So if you know the semi-major axis, you can figure out the eccentricity if you know the locations where these perihelia and aphelia are. In fact, you do because you want the perihelion to be Earth's orbit, which is 1 AU, so that is going to be 1 AU. You want the aphelion to be the Martian orbit, which is 1.524 AU. You can solve these two for the semi-major axis. Of course, we know the semi-major axis is just the average of these two. So the semi-major axis of your new orbit that you're putting this thing on is a new is 1.262 AU. So you have added energy to the orbit by moving it to a higher semi-major axis. As you might remember from basic physics, orbital mechanics, adding energy to an orbit causes the semi-major axis to increase. Decreasing energy causes it to decrease. And so you see that this orbit is the one where you add the least amount of energy 
and still make it to Mars. Again, you could do this orbit, sure, but now your semi-major axis is, is much larger and your energy is much larger, which means you need a huge rocket to get there. The benefit is you get there faster. The, that has never been an important enough benefit that anybody has ever done it that way. Instead, every single mission to Mars has taken an approach that moves from here over to here and lands at that point. How long does that flight take? Well, it's, it's half of the orbital period of this new orbit of the rocket. The orbital period of an object is equal to the semi-major axis to the three halves power. This is simply one of Kepler's laws, one of Kepler's three laws. Um, the semi-major axis of the Earth, and this is of course in semi-major axis in AU, orbital period in years. The semi-major axis of the Earth is one AU, and so the period is one year. That's nice. Semi-major axis of Mars, as you remember, is 1.524. So it takes Mars 1.88 years to go around the sun. And the semi-major axis of this is 1.262. So it takes this object, that your spacecraft, about 1.4 years or 17 months to go all the way around the sun. But you don't go all the way around the sun. You go to Mars, so you're only doing half of your orbit. So it takes you about eight and a half months to get from the Earth to Mars. And if you're ever paying attention to Martian flights, uh, the next one is not going to be for a while, so you had to have been paying attention recently, but they always launch something like nine months before they get there. They take about that long of a time to get there. So when do you launch? You don't launch when the Earth is right here and Mars is right here, because then in nine months, what's going to happen? Well, in nine months, your spacecraft is going to be here, but where is Mars going to be? It will only have gone about 40% of the way around, and it'll be around right here. And your spacecraft will fly by and say, Mars wasn't here. So instead, you launch when Mars is about right here. The Earth has not quite cut up, caught up with Mars yet. And then Mars is right here when the spacecraft arrives there. Or if you think about it, the spacecraft is actually moving slower than Mars at this point, which is why it's going to start to fall back towards the sun. And so it's not really that Mars is there when the spacecraft arrives. The spacecraft is there when Mars arrives. And in fact, as I keep saying, if this is April 2014, you know that Mars is right overhead, um, which means we are, I'll say that we're right here. We're right here. Mars is straight overhead at midnight, um, which means this would not be a good time to launch a spacecraft towards Mars. But a good time would have been just a few months ago. And in fact, the Mars Maven spacecraft, which is going to study the upper atmosphere of Mars, we'll talk a lot about that uh, in a few lectures. The Mars Maven spacecraft was launched in mid-November of 2013, just a few months ago. So indeed, the Earth was right here, Mars was right here at the time, and they will meet right here, and we can guess how long that's going to be. It's going to be eight and a half months from when they launched. They launched November 18th, 2013, eight and a half months later. Eight and a half months later would be early September of 2014. The actual arrival is a few weeks after that, but close enough. They're taking this exact trajectory just like we calculated using some very simple ideas. And how do you actually do it? Really, all you do is you have the, the rocket is in orbit. Getting into orbit, okay, that's a little bit complicated. I told you that the orbital dynamics is easy because all you have to worry about is the sun. Rockets going through the Earth's atmosphere much more complicated. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to assume that somebody else takes care of that and we are now in orbit around the Earth. Once you're in orbit around the Earth, all you do is calculate the velocity that you need to have and you know the direction you need to go perpendicular to the sun and then that's all you do. You, you blast your rocket, it gives you that exact velocity and you coast. The spacecraft moving to Mars, we sometimes think of them as burning their rocket the entire time but they don't. It's easier to think of it as they do one blast of the rocket and they coast for nine months until they get there. In practice, somewhere around in here, they take a look where they are and they say, oh, you know, I'm off by a little bit this way, a little bit this way, and they do a mid-course correction or two to perfectly align themselves. But other than those small corrections, they're really just coasting. They're really just resting and waiting until Mars grabs them, and then they have to do something else. Because, of course, if they got here and nothing else happened, well, if we, if we aimed perfectly, we would smash right into Mars, which would be entertaining, but not very scientifically useful. We've actually done that before a few times. If we slightly missed and we kept on going around the sun, we'd come back to the Earth, 
uh, or at least the position where the Earth was when we launched it. And so instead what we do is get too close to Mars and then slow down, use rockets to slow ourselves down and get into orbit around Mars at this location. In principle, relatively simple once you have figured out rockets in the space age and all these things. Uh, let's look at how it worked in practice. 